In this question, we are dealing with a random sample of three observations which are taken from a random variable with unknown mean and variance. The mean is called mu. And what we are after now is a sample estimate for mu, which is the expected value of y. So there are four options here which somehow use observations y1 to y3. And we are being asked whether these particular estimates we are given, for instance A1, whether that is unbiased, meaning is the expected value of A1 equal to mu. So, A1, the expected value of A1 is nothing else but the uh, sum of the expected values of y1 to y3 and then multiplied with 1 over 3 as we have that factor in front. Now as these three random variables are drawn independently they all have the same expected value mu and therefore this simplifies to 1 over 3 times 3 mu which is just mu and hence means that a1 is unbiased. What about a2? Here we are basically not using the third observation only using the first two observations. So let's calculate the expected value of a2 it's a half times the sum of the expectation of the two individual random variables y1 and y2. Each of them again will have an expected value of mu. So it's 1 over 2 times 2 times mu. So again mu and therefore again a2 is an unbiased estimator despite not using observation 3. What about the third estimator? Here we have the sum of all three observations but this time we don't multiply with 1 over 3 but only 1 over 2. So if we want to calculate the expectation of this we'll follow the same pattern it's going to be 1 over 2 times the sum of the individual expectations they of course will all be mu so it's 3 times mu in the parenthesis and therefore our expected value of a3 is 1.5 times mu and therefore a3 is biased it's not the expectation of A3 is unequal to mu. What about A4? So we'll follow the same result. Now we have unequal weights for the individual observations. That means we have somewhat varying factors in front of the individual expectations. But remember, they are still independently drawn, so we don't have to care about any uh, covariances. And what we can now see is that each individual expectation is again equal to mu and if we calculate that of course we again get mu so the expected value of a4 is mu so that is also unbiased despite the uh, slightly unconventional structure of a4 that was because the coefficients added to one so the question is now of those estimators that are unbiased which one's the most efficient that means we are looking at the variances of these estimators and we want the one with the smallest variance. So just to stress again what I already said previously, in our calculations of course we, are, we have been and we will be making use of the fact that they are sampled independently and now we want to compare the variances of the three unbiased estimators A1, A2 and A4. Since they're all unbiased they don't vary in that property and for unbiased estimators we would prefer those with smaller variances. Let's first look at the variance of A1. Now that is just equal to the variance and for A1 we replace the formula for A1 a third times y1, a third times y2, a third times y3 since these are independently sampled again we uh, don't have to worry about covariances and therefore that's just the same as the sum of the of each of the variance of each individual summoned and now we can take out the factors 1 over 3 if we take it out we need to square it so it will turn into 1 over 9 
for each of the three variances. Now the variances of each of the individual ones of the y1, y2 and y3 will all be identical. They will all just be the variance of our random variable y. So we get 1 over 9 times 3 times the variance of y and we are left with a third times the variance of y. So that's the variance of estimator a1. What about estimator a2? So same sort of argument and that eventually leads to 1 over 4 times the variance of y1 plus 1 over 4 times the variance of y2. So you can see we get uh, basically two variances of y but divide by 4 so we get a half variance of y. Now compared to the variance of a1 we can see that the variance of a1 is smaller. It's a third of the variance of y whereas a2's variance is a half of the variance of y. What about the variance of, no not 3, the variance of 4? So same application of the same rules we get due to independence we just get the sum of the variance of the individual parts and now in the next step and that was a negative weight negative a half was the weight to the third now in the next step we will have to take out the factors so we always need to square them to take them out so we got 9 over 16 twice and then we get a fourth so right, yeah, a fourth, and since we square and the negative disappears, so it's one over four variance of y three. Now the variances of y one, y two, and y three are of course all the same, so it's just variance of y. Here we expand that factor to have the common denominator of sixteen, and then we get nine plus nine plus four that is of course 22 over 16 times the variance of y and we can simplify that to 11 over 8 times the variance of y. Now that is of course still larger than even a2. So we find that the variance of a1 is smaller than the variance of a2 is smaller than the variance of a4. And the reason why this is, so this is, A1 is of course our very commonly known sample average, okay, and it's, it turns out it's the most efficient one. A2 doesn't use all information, so that's not an efficient way of doing things, we should use information Y3, and A4 weighs the information differently, although there isn't really any justification to do so. Therefore, to get an efficient estimator of the population mean is to use all sample information and weigh it equally.